In the summer of 2010, a disastrous monsoon caused unprecedented flooding in Pakistan. The rains flooded the north of the country and caused the overflowing of the river Indus, which crosses the regions of Punjab and Sindh, where it ultimately flows into the Indian Ocean. In total, about a quarter of Pakistan was submerged, the equivalent of the surface area of England. According to the United Nations, the disaster affected more than 21 million people and rendered at least 10 million homeless. In 2010, Handicap International deployed emergency operations to bring relief to the affected population. Today, it continues to provide support to those most vulnerable by helping them rebuild what was destroyed. The association is present in the north of the country, especially in the district of Swat, and in the south, in the province of Sindh, one of the poorest and at the same time one of the most affected areas. Aujourd'hui, euh, le contexte sur lequel le handicap international travaille, c'est euh, ces mêmes populations affectées par les inondations en 2010 qui aujourd'hui euh, ont pu rentrer chez elles sur leur lieu d'habitation initial puisque euh, l'eau s'est retirée. On, on fait une grande partie de, de reconstruction de shelter, donc on crée un shelter à l'emplacement de l'ancienne maison. Euh, on essaye aussi, euh, quand c'est possible, de réhabiliter des shelters existants et de les renforcer. In Jati, 8 to 10 shelters are constructed every day in Handicap International's workshop. In total, about 1,000 shelters will have been produced by the end of summer 2012. The shelters are then transported in kits, by truck, to the villages affected by the flooding. Following consultation with the communities, the men and women of each village participate in the assembly of their new homes. Here, Anif Mala, chief of a village of 200 people, is discussing the construction procedure of 21 shelters and the renovation of seven others with Handicap International representatives. Two years after the flooding, the poorest families still do not have the sufficient means to rebuild what was destroyed. With the help of the association, more than 1,000 families will have found a safe heaven where they can live with dignity. In order to meet the essential needs of the affected populations, latrines were also installed in the villages. These are manufactured in Handicap International's workshop, which employs a dozen workers who are disabled. Toutes les activités d'handicap international en eau et assainissement sont accompagnées de séances de promotion à l'hygiène afin de sensibiliser les bénéficiaires à la chaîne de contamination de l'eau. Through this intervention and those in over 60 other countries where Handicap International operates, the association is committed to making sure that the most vulnerable people, including persons with disabilities, are fully taken into account in the humanitarian response. Mobile teams were set up to meet persons with disabilities in their respective village in order to evaluate their needs and offer appropriate solutions. Crutches, wheelchairs, rehabilitation sessions for people fitted with prosthetics, vocational training, or as seen here, recreational kits to encourage the learning and integration of a child suffering from cerebral palsy. These are some of the actions that help reconstruct more than the walls that have collapsed in the summer of 2010. Almost two years after the worst natural disaster in the history of Pakistan, relief efforts continue and Handicap International decided to support the people who still haven't been able to turn over a new leaf. The sanitation of the flooded zones, access to water and a safe environment, but also the inclusion of persons with disabilities, and the response to their specific needs, these are the challenges that the association decided to take on. <laughs>